Okay, so in this we're going to go through the hyperbola's guided practice. This is going to be a three example uh, guided practice for you guys just to kind of get a feel for things. And uh, this is going to be the first question. So all we're going to do is graph these hyperbolas and then we're going to list out all of the important uh, components that you need to know how to how to describe and, and identify. Okay, so let's just do this question. Uh, this uh, particular hyperbola is written in the form y minus k squared over a squared minus x minus h squared over b squared equals one, okay? And uh, as we can see here, as I said before in the overview, this is always a squared, the first one, and this is always b squared. It doesn't matter which one is larger, okay? And as long as this is a y first, which is the positive one, and then you have the negative coefficient here, which is the x, if this is the y that comes first, which is the positive, coefficient right here, uh, y, that means that this transverse axis is going to open up and down. And what I mean by that is when you draw the hyperbola, it's going to open this way, up and open down. If this x were to appear first, it would open left and right. So just keep that in mind, some food for thought there, okay? So the transverse axis goes through, or connects the, vert, the, vert, the vertices of these two uh, two graphs right here, there's two shapes, okay? They're not parabolas, even though they look like that, but they're not, and right here, this would be a transverse axis connecting these two. So this transverse axis is vertical, is what I'm saying. So, first thing we'll do is identify the center, which is h and k, and I want you to keep in mind here that k always goes with the y, so this k, when I say y minus k, this k is actually a two, so, it's easily confused for people when they switch the x and the y on the top because they call that they call this h but it's actually k this is a two for k h goes with the x so this is going to be h right here this is going to be one so this is going to be one two that's going to be the center so the center is one two it's right here when i'm drawing it okay and here's what we're going to do the transverse axis is the one that appears first with this in this case y so it's going to go up and down and it's going to be, since this is a squared, so it's going to be 25. a squared is 25, and a is going to be the square root of that, which is 5. So that means up and down, we're going to go up 5 and down 5 from the center. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then down 5 to here. And those on the end of the transverse axis are called the vertices. So let's write that here, the vertices. And you have another one. Individually, they're called the vertex, but together they're called vertices. Okay, and uh, right here, so let's actually give those coordinates, actually, let's do that, the vertices. So we're going to go 5 up and 5 down from the center here, which is 1, 2. So we're only changing the y value. We're adding 5 to it and subtracting 5 from it to get to this point. So this point right here is 5 taken away from 2, which is going to be 1, negative 3. And this is going to be 5 straight up from 1, 2, so it's going to be 1, and 2 plus 5, which is 7. So those are the coordinates of the vertices. You have to find out those things, okay? So 1, negative 3, and here I got 1 and 7. Now the covertices. This is described by b squared, which in this case this is 4, so b is equal to 2. That means since this b squared is underneath x, we're going to go left and right by 2 here. So we're going to go to the left by 2 from the center and to the right by 2 from the center. So these are called covertices right here. Covertices. And this particular coordinate, we're going to go 2 to the left from 1, so it's going to be negative 1, 2. And this other coordinate here, which is also a covertex, covertices, is going to be uh, 1 plus 2, which is 3, comma 2. So that's what I have here. So these are my covertices. You have to find that as well. Not terribly difficult in any of this. And now we're going to draw a box to connect the outside vertices. So it's going to be like a rectangle, exactly what it is. Not like a rectangle. It is a rectangle. But uh, let's go ahead and pick a color here. And this width here. And this is a nice red. Okay, so we're going to do this. We're going to go through here when I'm saying we're going to draw a box like this where the edges of the box are the vertices and the covertices they have to go through the outside points and make a rectangle and this will be your guideline for drawing your asymptotes and so we have this going on here okay and uh, 
And what I'm telling you here is that right through here, this is the transverse axis. And then here's the conjugate axis, this one right here. So the transverse axis is telling you where it's going to go through, it's going to hit the vertices where the graph is going to start on these two points right here. Okay, and the co the trans the conjugate axis, which is this uh, horizontal thing here, this horizontal line segment, is just perpendicular to the to the transverse axis. So here's what we're gonna do: we're gonna connect the corners of this rectangle, and those will be my asymptotes. So let's actually draw that. Let's just change this to a to a green, I guess, and we'll say okay here, and through the center, and through this corner, we will have this kind of imaginary line here. And this will be my asymptote, one of them. And then here, and this is not a perfect drawing, but we're going to make, make the best we can. We got something like this. So we have another one, an asymptote. Okay. And these go forever, as you know. Okay, so here's the deal. Uh, the next thing we'll identify is the foci. And the foci, if you were to extend the transverse axes, would fall on that extension. So let's actually make this a, like a sea foam. That's a good color. So the foci, okay, this is going to be given by c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. Easy to remember because it's identical to the Pythagorean theorem, okay? And this is my a squared, which is 25, and my b squared is 4. So what I'm telling you is that c is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared, which means c is equal to the square root of 25 plus 4. So c is equal to the square root of 29. And the square root of 29 is somewhere between 5 and 6. I'm going to ask the calculator, what is that exactly? Square root of 29, oops, is 5 point, about 5.4, we'll say. So. So from the center, okay, from the center, we're going to go about 5.4 up and 5.4 down, which will be, you know, going up the transverse axis and down the transverse axis. So we're going to say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 0.4. So it's actually not at all that far inside of the, uh, the vertex right here like this. And then from the center, we're going to go down 5.4. We're going to say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then just about almost halfway but not quite so this is actually in this particular situation these are the coordinates of your foci we call that and here's how the drawing works the foci are always kind of in the middle of the graph and what I mean by that let's change the color let's make this purple or something uh, it's a really bright purple see how intense that is so I'm going to put the vertex right here. We're going to draw toward the asymptote with the focus on the inside of the curve. And then this is what's going to happen. With the foci on the inside of the curve. And the same thing down here. This is your vertex. And then we're going to draw toward the asymptote without touching it. We'll get closer and closer to it forever. So this thing keeps opening wider and wider as we go. And then it'll be something like that. It'll be drawn like this. And that's technically what's happening here, right? This is what your graph actually looks like. The only thing we're missing is we have to actually give the coordinates of the foci and the equations of the asymptote. So let's find that. And then we'll be done with this example. Okay. So the foci will have a coordinate. So let's give the coordinates of the foci. Let's actually change it back to uh, this plum color, which is nice. And then we'll say, okay, the foci here. So the foci since we're going up and down from the center by a distance of what we call root 29. So this distance here is what I'm telling you all the way to the top to the focus there is root 29. We're going to add that to this y value for the center. So this is going to be, and we're going to subtract it as well from the y value. So it's going to be 1 comma 2 minus root 29 we'll call it. And the other one's going to be 1 comma 2 plus root 29. You can leave it like that. That's perfectly fine. And if you want to do prime factorization, you can. if you have a calculator in particular, you go to menu and prove that or show that root 29, if it can be uh, simplified or not, we can go to number, factor, just type in 29. And if it turns out to be prime, then we have to leave it as root 29. And it is prime. That's the only factor there is. So it's a prime number. 
So we have to leave it as root 29. Otherwise, we could write it as something else. But this is a little food for thought. OK, so now we're going to talk about asymptotes. And there's a formula for this. And it really depends on uh, if the y-axis is your, I mean, if, if y is your transverse axis or x, x is your transverse axis. And here's how the formula works. It's going to be either, we'll say it's either plus or minus b over a times x minus h plus k, or it'll be y equals plus or minus a over b times x minus h plus k. And then you're thinking, okay, how do you know which one it is? Well, that is fairly easy to answer. Let me change this color here and I'll show you. Okay, so um, if you look at this graph, just take a look at this, okay? There's, this is the point that's on both asymptotes, okay? And the slope of this, it's the rise from one point to another over the run, okay? So the rise here, it's going up one, two, three, four, five and the run is two. So this right here in the equations is the slope. So in this case, it's five over two. And if you look at these two numbers right here, five and two are your values for A and B. So we're actually looking at this one. So when you have the parabola that's opening up and down like this, right, where your transverse axis is parallel to the Y axis, right, where Y comes first, all that, all right, it means that this is, we're looking at A over B. If you have a parabola is doing, uh, sorry, a parabola, a hyperbola that's doing this, opening sideways, then this will be b over a. So that's the difference, really, that we're looking at, okay? So in this case, this is going to be a over b. It's 5 over 2. That's the slope. So it's going to be plus or minus 5 over 2. The minus is this line right here, this, this, uh, the equation of this asymptote right here, which is telling me to go down 5 and over 2. So... Here's what I have. I have y equals plus or minus. So this rise over run is going to be 5 over 2. And then it's going to be x minus h. My h right here if from the center is 1. So it's x minus 1. And then plus 2. And that will be my both equations at once. That's the both equations of the asymptotes. You can write it like that. If you want to write them in slope-intercept form and expand it a little, you can do that. Uh, we can say that it's y equals 5 halves times x minus 1 plus 2. And we could say well, the other one is y equals negative 5 halves times x minus 1 plus 2. And then we can distribute this. I'm going to actually simplify that a little bit. So we get 5 halves x minus 5 halves plus 2, which is 4 halves, if you want to call it that. So this equation is going to be x equals 5 halves x minus a half for the uh, increasing slope, right? So if you see here, this point right here is about minus a half. That's where it should be, the y-intercept, and that's what that graph does. And this one will simplify. This will be negative 5 halves, x minus 5 halves. I'm sorry, plus 5 halves, and negative times a negative, and then plus 4 halves. So this is going to give me negative 5 halves, x plus 9 halves. That's the other equation. So this right here, this intercept is supposedly 9 halves. 9 halves is... And about 4 point, it's 4.5, so we're going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4. It should be literally right there at 4.5. That's pretty good, pretty good drawing for that, for that intercept. So that's, you can write them like this, or you can put them all together like that. And those are the equations of your asymptotes, and that's really the entire thing. That's all you really have to know uh, with hyperbolas in this class.